Start. I would uh, want everyone to please stand up for a moment of silence and prayer. Lord, let us have faith. Where there is despair, let us have hope. Where there is darkness. Let us have light, and where there is sadness, let us have joy. and broken economically, socially and emotionally. But today we can see how bright the future of Rwanda will be through the hard work, unity and togetherness in the Rwandan community of UNL. Most of us here as Rwandan students did not experience the genocide against the Tutsi firsthand. But we've all experienced the consequences through our parents, friends, and families. That is why it means so much for us to come together to remember the lives of more than a million of parents and relatives did not have a chance to see. To reflect on the torture and pain they went through. Hundreds of miles they walked trying to find a refuge and sleepless nights they spent hoping they would see the next morning. We also honor those who risked and put their lives on the line to save the lives of others. Every year on the 7th of April, the Rwandan community around the world started a series of 100 days to commemorate the 1994 genocide against the Tutsi in Rwanda. On a vraiment voulu nous exterminer, on a voulu vraiment effacer toute trace que nous avons existé. So we have events like these to remind us of what happened. 
to remind us of the history that our country went through, to remind us of those hundred days where darkness was over the country, where a neighbor was killing a neighbor, where hatred won, and love was not nowhere to be found. We think about unity and what unity has done for our country. What being a Rwandan actually means and how much more important than it, that is compared to being a Tutsi or a Hutu or a Dwa. We take the moment to just sit down and appreciate the value of unity. And we think about renew. How do we renew the face of this country that was so dark at a point where children were not given a chance to live? Unborn babies were not given a chance to live. How do we renew the face of a country that was left for so many widows and orphans that people thought it would never come out of darkness? So, through initiatives like the Walk to Remember that was initiated by people who are probably 30 years old now, who are around the ages of 6 and 10 in the 1994 Genocide Against the Tutsis. We tell the world that we know our story. There are so many people out there who try to redefine our stories, for example, by changing the number of 1,074,017 to something like 500,000. We remember the people who died. So by walking, we're showing the world that our story is not, forget is not forgotten. Our story is still in our mind and it vividly comes to us. Right after the genocide against the Tutsi, things were getting a little bit calmer across the country. The city was getting cleaned up. People were returning to their homes. Victims were forgiving their perpetrators. A whole new government was getting implemented. The new institutions were rising all over across the country. And students were returning to school. New shot across the country. years the one that preceded it. It was time for students to go back to school. That is when Sylvestre Vizimana, Chantal Bujar Maholo, Beatrice Mkambaraga, Serafina Mkart Kwasa, Helen de Benimana and Vanessa de May said goodbyes to their children. Their children were going back to school for a period of approximately three months. Unyandi Secondary School was a school that was located in the western province of Rwanda. It serves both as a boarding school and home for students. It was a better place for students to share their dreams and all the beautiful things that awaited them them in the future. As much as people were willing to let go of hatred and move towards a fresh start, it's not everybody that shared the same vision. It's not everybody that was willing to let go of hatred. 
some of the Rwandans who had fled to Congo, currently known as the Democratic Republic of Congo, bordering Rwanda to the west, conspired to finish what they thought never came to an end. Several in Hamye slipped across the border in hopes of eliminating all the remaining Tutsis. March 18, 1997. On a very beautiful Monday evening, students made their way out of the dining hall to go back to classroom for their evening studies. At 8 p.m., the perpetrators made their way in the school. And aware of the intruders, the student tried and tried to lock the rooms. The militia managed to invade one of the classrooms, ordering the students to separate themselves into Hutus and Tutsis. Shut up. I want to see the Hutus on the left and the Tutsis on the right. There is no time not to see the Orwandans. I want to say it like Hutus on the left and the Tutsis on the right. We are one! No! No! no, no. Kill them all! The militia indiscriminately murdered 17 students and seriously injured several. Dreams of the students who were brutally crushed down without mercy and the act of dehumanization was simply indescribable. Thank to God, the Rwandan Patriotic Army that was in the area came to the rescue of the victims. The militia were arrested and taken to court. There are no words that could ever describe the bravery of these students. There will always be an eternal reminder that unity strives and that we are one no matter our differences. We are the product of the sacrifice. We learn to always stand as one and never shall we let this happen again. Never, ever again. You look at the pictures displayed on our wall that's how the country that's the picture of the country in 1994 if you see the country now you won't even believe it if you, you ask people so who who are you and ask them my, uh, my the funny question i get all the time whenever i share my story so who, who are you i'm a, I'm, I'm, I'm a rwanda so what do you mean but there are two ethnies i say they were but we are all Rwandans now. This is why our country is going forward strong. 
We still have problems? Yes. We still have work to do? Yes. But we have a country that is going strong. We, we have faith in our leadership. And we have young people, like 105 of them here today, that are willing to carry this message and make change and to make the world know what really happened and how we are a strong country that tries to rebuild itself every day. So we thank you all. Thank you all for coming today, and I really do hope that you have learned something. And I hope as you go home, you'll be the kind of people who fight against hatred. And just to end, I'd like to end with a quote from our president. He, uh, had, he had a speech today earlier, and it goes, the truth goes through fire, but does not burn. Our truth will not burn. The children of Rwanda would tell it. Tell it till it hurts. And still, we'll continue telling it. Thank you for coming.